Welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series, which can be heard on VHHA.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get podcasts. We're a member of the Public Health Podcast Network, the Virginia Audio Collective, the NYC Podcast Network, and the Family Podcast Network. And we're on the radio each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, 107.7 107.7 FM and 8.20 AM across Central Virginia and 1650 AM in Hampton Roads and one stays at 1 PM on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Please send any questions, comments, or feedback to pcfpodcast at vhha.com. That's pcfpodcast at vhha.com. I'm Selena Lord, the VHHA team, and today we're excited to be joined by Caitlin Pond, a physician assistant at Mary Washington Pediatrics, for a conversation about her work and her recently published children's book called The Art of Being a Heart. Welcome to the program, Caitlin. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Let's start by getting to know you better. You're currently a physician assistant at Mary Washington Pediatrics, and I understand you spent some time in rural medicine where you also treated pediatric patients. What are the essential things people should know about you and your work? Uh, So I've been in practice for about three years now. I started in uh, Ladysmith, Virginia, which is a little bit more of a rural area, as you said. And there I did family medicine slash pediatric. So I saw a good combination of both, but my love has always been definitely in full-time peds. So I decided to switch with the same organization to Mary Washington to full-time pediatric. So now I'm up here in Fredericksburg. So it's a little bit less rural, but we still have a really cool population of people. We have a lot of Afghani refugees and a lot of people from Africa and a variety of different ethnicities and cultures. So it's been a really cool transition coming up here. So even though I'm not in rural, I'm still seeing underserved populations and helping to educate. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. We're recording this episode in February, which is American Heart Month, a time to focus on heart health, which is critical because heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. You recently published a children's book called The Art of Being a Heart, which teaches children about the heart and how to keep it healthy. If you would, tell us about the inspiration for the book and the process of taking it from an idea to writing it and having it published. Yeah, absolutely. So I decided to go ahead and self-publish with my book just because of all the research that I did with it. But the idea I had was because I'm always trying to talk to parents about their kids' conditions and educate parents on things. And I find that to be pretty easy within my career, but I always have had trouble finding the correct words to be able to say the same thing to a pediatric patient or for them to understand similar things. So I decided that I wanted to find a way that bridged that gap. And I felt like writing a children's book that explained the heart, which is obviously one of the most important organs in the body in a more fun and kind of naive way would be a great way to kind of like bridge that gap and to encourage or show kids how important it is to have a heart and then how important it is to keep that heart healthy. I wrote the book or I wrote the manuscript for the book and then I just found actually an illustrator on one of the marketplaces and then I also paid an editor and a formatter for Amazon and just kind of went from there. So altogether, it took about like five to six months to write and get the book self-published. This is your first book. How are you promoting it and what, if any, future plans might you have about writing other published works? So for promoting it, I've been mostly doing social media at this point. So because I am a physician assistant, I am very lucky that I have a great network of healthcare providers around me and just am overall linked in with healthcare. So I've been using a lot of like people who have a high influence on like Instagram and TikTok and also been posting it in a lot of Facebook groups. I did a podcast with Mary Washington as well on the book. I also wrote through the NCCPA a blog post with them. In the future, I plan on doing some read-alongs to kids. So like going to hopefully like Barnes and Noble and reading it to them there and then also doing some like book signings. So I have a lot of plans in place. It's just getting it all in the time to get it moving. (laughs) Definitely. And do you have any future plans about writing other books? Yeah, I actually, in the future, if everything goes well, I'd like to write one about most of the major organs. So like the lungs, the kidneys, the liver, the brain, the back of the book actually says stay tuned for the fun of being a lung. So I do hope to write more on other organs again so that it makes it kid friendly. For people who might want to read your book, The Art of Being a Heart, where can they find it? So it is available on Amazon. It's available now for Heart Month on the Kindle and it is also available in paperback. A moment ago, we mentioned that we're recording this during American Heart Month, and Mm -hmm. we mentioned the dangers of heart disease. Beyond what you share in the book, what tips or guidance would you offer to people listening to this about caring for their heart health? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I always try to tell my little ones that heart health starts early. So there's kind of this misconception that the things that we do when we're young don't affect us and that it only starts to affect us as we get older. You always hear that notion of, oh, well, that's going to catch up with you when you get older kind of thing. So I want to encourage people that it doesn't catch up with us when we get older. It catches up with us now. Studies have shown that we can put plaque on our arteries starting at the age of three years old and that it can start being put on the heart at the age of eight at the minimum. So the habits and the things that we're doing now are important for our overall health. So I try to encourage parents and children to start thinking about that early. And then I do also like to tell parents and kids that it's important to start healthy habits. It's a whole lot easier to keep healthy habits than break bad habits. So if we can start with encouraging kids to exercise at a young age and to eat appropriately and to limit things like soda and fast food, energy drinks, those kinds of things, we can hopefully keep kids just they continue to do those habits into adulthood instead of having to break bad ones as they get older and then start good ones. So Overall, I just try to encourage that it's important to take care of ourselves now, even more so than later, because it's all accumulating. The damage is accumulating. Thank you so much again for being with us today. And before we let you go, we do have a tradition on the Patients Come First podcast to ask our guests a pair of personal questions to give listeners a sense of who you are beyond the work you do. To keep things interesting, we have a list of 10 mystery questions. So please choose two numbers between 1 and 10, and I'll ask you the corresponding questions. Absolutely. So uh, eight and four. Eight and four. Number eight. Tell me one memory from your life that whenever you think of it, it makes you smile. Oh, that's such a good question. So definitely adopting probably my dog. I have several dogs now, but (laughs) probably adopting my dog Sparky, who was a shelter dog and like seeing him transition from being like really timid and a little bit I don't want to say aggressive, but a little bit not nice, I guess. Um, And like being like the sweetest boy ever and like cuddling up and now he's so spoiled that he can't not sleep on a pillow. It's probably like one of my favorite memories ever of bringing him home and seeing how happy he was to be in a new house and in a safe, happy environment. And number four, which, if any of the following things do you consider most plausible? Bigfoot, Yeti, the Loch Ness Monster, the Jersey Devil, or UFOs and aliens? If none of those apply, but if you believe in something else along those lines, please share it. Ooh, that's a good one. Probably aliens is the most probable. But I also believe, I've actually watched a lot of documentaries because I'm weird on mermaids and how they actually could be like a counterpart between humans and like fish when they were back in the day, like when we started evolving from Neanderthals into and then getting closer to the water that we might have actually evolved into like a mermaid like creature. So I think even more so I believe in mermaids because it seems more scientifically plausible. I love that answer so much. I had no idea documentaries like that existed, and I am going to look them up right now. That's so cool. They're really cool. (laughs) That's awesome. Well, that brings us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. And we want to once again thank our guest, Caitlin Pond, for joining us today. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was actually really fun. <laughs>